In the 10th part of this module, we cover the asynchronous execution in JavaScript. Um, and again, as you see at the warning sign in the bottom, this is a topic that can lead to errors. Uh, it's often quite difficult to understand what is being uh, done by JavaScript, why the output is as it is and not as you would like to. And uh, JavaScript by itself, you can read that often on the internet, is single threaded. Uh, so this means there is a single execution model, there's a single thread. If you go into operating systems, you'll get more information on what that means. But basically it means JavaScript can only do one thing at a time. Um, but this is not quite the story. For example, you have seen the timeout example before where some timeout is running in the background for a certain milliseconds and meanwhile something else happens. So clearly there is more than one thing happening at the same time. Um, and what actually happens is that there are several components in JavaScript. If we take this example here, um, which is again one of those examples that is not very intuitive, we have a function uh, log that logs something, as the name says. Uh, it has a callback, as you have just learned. Uh, so our callback function says simply log one. And the delay is zero milliseconds. So basically this should wait for zero milliseconds. It should not wait at all. And then it should call our function cb, which simply outputs one. Uh, and we call the function down here. So here we just define it. And the intuition would be that because this is zero, we should directly get a one and then we should get a two. Uh, the reality, and of course I wouldn't show it if it would be the other way around, the reality is that first we get two, first we get, and then we get one. So the delay here does not seem to uh, play a very big role. And if I change it to a thousand milliseconds, one second, uh, you see that it takes a bit, but still two comes first, one comes later. Uh, but the order is the same no matter how many seconds I put into there. Um, and this has to do with the way JavaScript executes these things. Um, so in this case, two, one, and I'll explain to you why this is the case. JavaScript uh, has a number of components and we'll take the same example here. So we'll take the timeout function that uh, logs one after zero milliseconds and then logs two. Um, JavaScript has this so-called event loop um, and this is a number of things that are happening in the browser. Uh, this is slightly different in the back end. But the core thing of our JavaScript engine is the call stack. So here we put all the things that are currently being executed. Um, and as long as they're not finished, they remain on the call stack. So for example, if we call a function, we add that function call here. And if then within that function, another function is being called, then it comes on top of that because our execution is not finished uh, while the other thing is being added. So that's the first thing here. If we go through this code, the function is being parsed uh, and nothing is executed because this is just a function definition. Uh, it starts here. It starts as soon as we get to our log statement. Uh, and what happens is that JavaScript adds it to the call stack. So it says we have a function call, let's add this here. Uh, and this is called a frame. Again, this is not as important uh, why this is the case, but. This is a frame on our call stack. Uh, now, if we look at what log does, we get into here. The first statement is again a function call set timeout. So again, this is being added on top of the call stack. Uh, log is still in execution, so it's, it's still here. It's not removed. And now we get to the interesting part. There are a number of uh, so-called browser web APIs. So application programming interfaces that are run by the browser. Um, and whenever we reach a statement that is executed in one of these APIs, it basically goes from the call stack to our browser API. So in this case, timeout is part of one of the browser APIs. It is being moved over here. Um, and the browser web APIs, they run in another execution. So they are not single threaded as we discussed before, but they can do things in parallel to our regular execution. Um, and in the example of the, uh, of the timeout, the timer is running in parallel to the rest of our code being run. Um, and now we said this timer is zero, so it basically directly is finished before anything else happens. Uh, and what happens then is that we get to the callback um, and the browser web, web API does not just execute a callback, 
but it basically puts this to the message queue. So it says, we're done here. Uh, you should execute CB as soon as you have time. Uh, so this is a message that goes back to JavaScript. But right now it's not being executed. So it's waiting here in our queue. Um, and what happens then is the interesting part. The message queue does not execute anything. It waits until our call stack is empty. Uh, so it does not do anything until the call stack is completely empty. And in this case, we still have log. We are still here uh, and the set timeout is now gone. So we go to the next execution, which is console.log and we add it to our call stack. Uh, so now we get to console.log. Um, and what happens now is simply that this is executed. So it's executed and removed from our call stack. And this means that in the console we see two. Uh, so this is our first output. Uh, then we are at the end of our log function. So actually the log execution is finished, which means the log statement, the log frame disappears from our call stack. Okay. Uh, and the only thing we're left now is the message in our message queue. And after each execution, our event loop checks, is the call stack empty? Uh, now it is empty, so now finally it takes the CB, the callback, and puts it into the call stack. Uh, and the call stack then simply executes it. So it goes into CB, it adds console.log to our call stack, it logs, and we're done. Um, so what happened now is basically that if we go back in time, uh, the execution of our callback of our log one waits until everything is finished. Uh, so even though the timeout was zero here, uh, it does not do anything as long as we still have code to run. Uh, and this explains that even though the callback is, is zero, uh, the timeout is zero, that two always comes first because the execution has to finish, the call stack has to be empty until we get to our log one. Uh, so this is a quick explanation of how this works. Um, to summarize, Whenever we have a command that is executed, we place a frame on the call stack. Um, when we hit a frame that is, uh, that is being executed by a browser web API, we move it to there. So we basically direct it to the browser web API. Uh, an example for those are the timeouts we have seen. Other things which we'll cover in part 11 are AJAX calls, so asynchronous HTTP requests. Um, once the browser web API is done, it basically places a message or a callback in our message queue. And the message queue then waits uh, until the call stack is empty. And this means after, whenever something is executed here in the call stack, um, the message, the event loop checks, is there still a frame in here? And if it's not, uh, as soon as it's empty, the message queue moves the content to the call stack and starts executing. Now, this is a little bit complicated. So if you haven't understood that, there are two links in the literature reference that explain how, how all of this works. There's also a video and a tool uh, where you can put in code into a window and see how it executes in this uh, event loop to get a bit more of a feeling for this. In summary, what we have now covered in the parts uh, seven to 10 are some of the more difficult things of JavaScript, the things that are unintuitive, and we have discussed the type conversion, comparison of variables, uh, hoisting and scopes, and then finally callbacks and the asynchronous uh, execution in JavaScript. So this helps you to understand most JavaScript libraries and what kind of input they expect. For example, the callbacks are fairly common, um, but there are two parts left that we will cover in this context um, and we'll do them next.